Hey guys, Blair with Revit Auto, and in this video of Fix It Friday, we're showing you how you can service and replace the fluid in your 2012 Ram 1500's front differential. So I'm underneath the vehicle on the driver's side, just behind the front tire. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my 13 millimeter here to remove the four bolts that are holding in the front skid plate. Then we'll just move this out of the way. The fill and drain plug are on the front side of this front diff here. So this is your lower and this is your upper. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna first make sure that we can open this upper before we do this, because you don't ever want to pull your drain plug and not be able to fill it back up. Utilizing a T50 Torx bit, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the upper plug and now that I know that the upper plug is loose, what I'm gonna do is move the drain pan into position and I'm gonna remove it all the way and see if a little bit of fluid comes out. Now the vehicle's up on ramps and jacked up, so if no fluid comes out, that's okay. It's okay that there's no fluid running out. We're up on a hill and an incline. So now I'll go ahead and loosen the drain and now if we don't get any fluid out of here, we're in trouble. That was a dad joke for all you guys at home. I'm not a dad, I should specify that. Okay. All right, so as it's coming down, you wanna make sure that you have clear sight through it so I can look through here and I don't see any sort of metal or debris and I don't think I see anything. I see just a little bit on this drain plug here. So everything looks really good. This is exactly what you want to see out of your front diff. So this is our drain plug here and it is magnetic. And you'll see here that there's just a little bit of, uh, of some metal stuff that has come up here. This is really, really minute. And this is fantastic. For 100,000 miles, that is beyond wonderful. So I'll go ahead and I'll put the drain plug back in and then we will fill the sucker back up. I'm just uh, putting the lower plug back in and moving the drain pan out of the way. Okay, so I'm using a fluid transfer pump here. Now this is actually for a half gallon bottle, but they do make them for quart size bottles. So what you do is you just press it in, lock it in there so it doesn't pop out on you, right? It's got a little bit of teeth, so it's got some grab. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open this up here and like I said, this is for a half gallon jug, not a quart jug. So it's going to require some fettling. Some what? Fettling okay. is the British term. I don't know what that is. It's gonna require some finagling. And cap push. Alrighty. Got my little hole in there. Now I will feed you through to the other side and you just start pumping. There we go, that's the stuff. And you just push it down there slowly and we're just gonna fill it all the way until it starts to burp out. You getting good, good film of that? Oh yeah, so good. All the fluid just going through. Okay. Would you 
look at that. Trying to get every last drop out of here. And while that is uh, doing its thing, I'll go ahead and open up the other court. And I'm going to put this guy in here. And now that I'm on my second court, I will have the oil pan nearby, which will allow me to capture any fluid that pours back out. When I fill this all the way up to the top, you'll see the fluid just run back down. And I'm pumping it slower now because I don't want to waste any of this stuff. Alrighty, so now we know that we're full. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull our little plug back out, and I'm just gonna let whatever drain back out. All right, now it's just dripping, so I'll go ahead and put that top fill plug back in. And then just grabbing my ratchet, I'll just uh, snug her back up. Alrighty, now she's nice and snug. And now I'll just wipe the area clean. And if there's any rust or anything that I see on these mounting holes that I use for the uh, cover, I'll go ahead and just spray a little anti-seize or something on them so they don't continue to rust on me. All right, so I'll go ahead and put the pan back on with the four 13 millimeter screws. Uh, just so you know, these rear bolts here are not very slotted. The front bolt holes are slotted. So that's how we know that we're putting it on the right way. But it only goes on one way. So if it doesn't fit, you got it flipped around. Alrighty, now using my electric ratchet and 13 millimeter, I will snug them all down. check to make sure that they are good and tight and they're not going to come out. You don't have to put these on too tight. You can strip them. So you're just, you know, making them snug and then leaving them there. And I'll have torque specs in the description of the video. Alrighty, that's it. Thanks for watching our video on how to service your Ram 1500. We hope that it really helped you save a couple bucks and learn a few things too. If you really like this video and you want to see more Ram 1500 ones, be sure to hit that like and smash the subscribe button. I'm Blair with Revit Auto, and as always, happy motoring.